you doing, Trench? I'm back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Click on the bell to receive notifications. Today we're going to continue the spanking of Farid in part two. So if you didn't watch part one, please go watch it first and then continue watching this part two. We will finish Farid off today. We will finish him off by the truth, nothing but the truth. So if you really care about the truth, Muslims, continue watching. Let us start. Now, even the Coptic Church uses this term. As we can see here, the text says, The translation, To us, divorce is not permissible after the marriage contract. According to Salibi Prince's translation, To us, divorce is not permissible after the sex contract. Wait, 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 ya Farid. لوين بدك تروح يا جال يا كذاب يا زنديق والله انت ما عندك شرف let me say it in the Arabic way والله ما عندك شرف ما عندك وجدان يا كذاب ابن كذاب you have no shame you have no honor and you have no dignity and here is why don't you Muslims always cry for context let us read the sentence in context. It is talking about Aqda Nikah, the contract of Nikah, which is nothing but sexual intercourse. And if we continue reading, it's talking about prayer. And when the Imam is there, Wahudur al Imam, when the Imam is also there, when the Imam is present. So is this talking about Christianity? No. So why are you trying to force the effing word, the nikah word, down our throats? It has nothing to do with Christianity. This book, this Coptic book, is addressing Muslims and Islam. And uh, Islamic sex contract, the nikah. That's what it is. The effing contract of Islam. So why are you lying? Why are you saying that this is about Christianity? No, we Christians, we have something called zawaj. We don't practice nikah when we get married. There is nothing called a aqda nikah in Christianity. There is aqda zawaj. Aqd as zawaj in the presence of a priest, for example. You liar. Yalla. It is what it is. This is Farid leaks. What can we expect from this liar and deceiver? You see, Farid leaks is the gift that keeps on giving. Muslim apologists like Farid leaks are useful idiots. They are actually helping us. They are helping us to show everybody that the Muslim apologists are nothing but liars and deceivers. They are trying to save the Ummah from drowning, not realizing that they are the cause of the Ummah to drown even further. There is a tsunami, an avalanche of apostate coming, and it will knock down or it will knock down over the ummah because of the lies and deception of these Muslim apologists. Farid, thank you for being the useful idiot that you are. If there is, if there is a Muslim who is truly sincere, if there is a Muslim who is respecting himself, then I challenge you to unfollow this liar and deceiver this Farid leaks, this Farid al Khaja, stop following him on YouTube. You need to unsubscribe if you really care about the truth. Do you really care about the truth, Muslims? Yell, let us continue. 
Now let us go and see what the best of the best has to say about the meaning of nikah. Here is the English translation of Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 3, and let us go to page 57. Again, Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 3, page 57. And I will provide the link to this book in the description box so you can find it there. Let us go to page 57. This is page 57 of Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 3. To understand the meaning of an nikah, nikah, here is the meaning. Nikah linguistically means to unite and to bring together a man and a woman. The real literal meaning, now watch, of nikah is to have sexual intercourse. What? So the meaning of nikah means to have sexual intercourse? Yes. But on the other hand, the metaphorical meaning of nikah is the bond of marriage. That's the metaphorical meaning. But the real meaning, the real literal meaning of nikah is sexual intercourse. Did you catch it? I have nothing to do with it. This is Sunan Ibn Majah, volume 3, page 57. Do you see how Farid Leaks is lying about the word nikah? What the true meaning of nikah is? And how he's forcing the word nikah down our throats? We Arabic-speaking Christians have nothing to do with this word. We, when we get married, we use the word zawaj. Because that's the real meaning of marriage. Remember, two different words. Marriage, zawaj, nikah, sexual intercourse. Deal with it, Muslims. I have nothing to do with this book. This is Sunan Ibn Majah. Don't forget that Sunan Ibn Majah is one of the six important books in Sunni Islam. Which, for example, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari are included too. Are you going to throw Ibn Majah under the bus to lie about Islam, Farid? Hmm, please do that. Can you do that for me? Can you throw Ibn Majah under the bus, yeah, Farid? I'm sure you can. And yesterday... We showed you the video about this false translation that is supposedly published in the year 1816. But we Christians don't accept it. It's nothing but a fake translation. And if you didn't watch the video, I highly recommend you to go and watch it. Let me try something here. I created this translation of the Quran, and this is Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran. This is my translation of the Quran. Muslims, would you accept it? Look what it says. Bi'ism ash-shaytan ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Satan, the most compassionate, most merciful. Muslims, what do you think of this translation? Would you accept it? Why not? You will call it a false translation. Well, that's why we don't accept any false translation for the Bible. So, Farid, why are you such a hypocrite? Why are you rejecting my translation of the Quran? But why do you get shocked when we Christians don't accept any false translation of the New Testament? Do you see the double standard here, Muslims? This is the double standard of your hero, Farid Leaks. Furthermore, Lo and behold, I found a really interesting and damaging fact about this false translation that Farid brought up. Watch. After doing some research, I came to the conclusion who the translator is behind this fake Arabic translation of the New Testament. This person, by the name of Nathaniel Sabbat, Nathaniel Sabbat, he is the translator of the 1816 published 
fake translation of the New Testament in Arabic. Do you see it? 1816 Calcutta. So this guy, who is he? And let me tell you something about him. This guy is a Muslim, a Muslim, yes, a Mohammedan who wanted to become a Christian to attack Christianity. So he was a Muslim in disguise. So he wanted to join Christianity only to attack it from within. He wanted to learn about Christianity so he could try to attack it. Look at this deceptive tactic. This reminds me of someone who is also a deceiver. Take a wild guess who we were talking about today. Farid response, right? <laughs> yes, you heard it correctly. This guy was a wannabe Christian, but in reality, he was a Muslim, and I have proof for it. So why would any sane Christian accept his false translation, right? Do you see the problem that we have to deal with here? <laughs> Fake Christians who are in reality Muslims getting paid to create a false translation of the New Testament, calling Jesus Isa al-Masih, not Yesu al-Masih, in their fake translation. And not only that, getting paid for it. Cash money, baby. So if this was not enough to show you, this so-called Arab Christian by the name of Nathaniel Sabbath, he was hired to translate the New Testament into Arabic by a person called Martin. When, Martin, when this Martin left India, Sabbath's translations of the New Testament, in particularly Persian and also Arabic, the Persian New Testament and the Arabic New Testament were questioned by other scholars. Did you catch it? So his work was not even to be trusted. Why? Because he was forcing Muslim or Islamic things inside the New Testament. Islamic doctrines inside our New Testament translation, or in this case, in his false New Testament translation in the Arabic. So any sane person, is there any sane person who would trust this false translation of this Muslim who called himself a Christian, only accepting Christianity to attack it within, while being a Muslim in disguise. And look how this guy was working. Look what it says. Look what it says more about him. If we continue reading, soon after Martin's death, he, Nathaniel Sabbath, renounced Christianity. What a coincidence. Wow. Or the moment his boss dies, this guy leaves Christianity and returns to Islam. Shortly afterwards, he again declared himself a Christian. So religion was nothing but a game for this guy. He was changing religion more than his dirty socks. So religion became a game for this Nathaniel Sabbath. This guy was not right in the head. Clearly, he had some psychological issues. Do you see it? And unfortunately, we also read that he died a really horrible death. And I think Muslims gave the order to the pirates to get rid of him, to kill him in the end. They throw him into the sea. What a horrible way to die. Well, what do you expect of Islam? Right? What do you expect, guys? No, any person, would you accept a translation of such a person who was changing a religion more than his dirty socks? Joining Christianity in the first place to attack it? Calling himself a Christian while being a Muslim in disguise to attack Christianity from within? 
to learn about Christianity and to attack it? Would any sane Christian accept his Arabic translation of the New Testament? Of course not. Never. And this is why his false translation of the New Testament never became famous. This is the reason why we reject this fake translation. Ya Farid, leaks. This is why we don't accept this translation. Because it's nothing but a fake translation of the New Testament that has Islamic doctrines, Islamic names like Isa al-Masih. No. As we showed you in our previous video, we Arabic-speaking Christians, we don't call Jesus Isa al-Masih. We call him Yesu al-Masih. Did you catch it? Farid, you are a miskin. You are a munafiq and you are a deceiver. Yalla. It is what it is. Muslims, please, never ever put your trust in this deceiver, this scammer by the name of Farid Response.